Hi everybody, I'm Sarah and welcome to the Big Blue House Homestead. I'm standing over here with my chickens because I wanted to make sure they were alright. Because if you can see the sky up here, it has been raining all day. Uh, it actually started yesterday afternoon and it has non-stop rained. So I thought I would run out for a break in between the rain spouts to just sit there and check on the girls to make sure they were all right because they don't like being out in the rain and I don't want them to get sick or anything. So I had to do that. But I found something the other day. I was mowing up here in the front area and I forgot I had planted this and now I'm so excited so I want to share it. Okay, so this is the area next to my driveway. Can you see that big plant right there? Not a lot of people do this. Not a lot of people grow them and I have to share this planted these last year and forgot about them because I thought they died. And when I cleaned out all this tall grass, I found an artichoke. And that's so cool. And I actually have another one forming right down in here and one right down in there. So that means I'll get three artichokes. But look at that, it's a little baby artichoke. Is that not so cool? Okay, so I kind of showed you what I'm working with outside today. Gloomy, rainy, nasty, wet day. I can't get anything done in the garden. So I decided, well, what's the next best thing to do? And that is inside stuff. So I have a lot of things that I need to get done. I've been very busy. I've got a couple days break from the garden because it's gonna be raining forever. But I do need to get plants in. But in the meantime, I'm gonna work on stuff in the kitchen. Okay, so what I actually have, I'm working with today is this big box of corn. Um, it was from a local farmer. It said it was local from our area. I don't know if it's GMO'd or not, I don't care. I'm looking at food shortages coming up. I am looking at struggles and battles with grocery stores. I don't wanna do this pandemic thing anymore because it's getting weird. I was the only person walking through the grocery store besides Brian, and we were the only ones with masks and gloves. And there was like 80 other people just back to back with nothing on. So I'm looking at it right now as though this is not gonna go away until everybody complies to rules. So what I wanna do is stock up on as much as I can now. Um, until my garden starts to come in, I wanna stock up with as much produce as I possibly can. This corn was on sale. It's, you know, nice big corn. It was on sale too for a dollar. So I figured why not? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel all the husks off and I'm going to clean the corn really well. And then we're going to section it and blanch it and pack it up for freezing. And that way I have some corn to eat until my corn starts to come in. But I'm gonna work on the corn. I won't do a whole video on that, but if you've ever thought about, you know, storing your own corn and freezing it, uh, you can can it. I don't usually because I like to use my can, canning jars for other things because I'll just freeze this. But what I do is I clean it really well, remove all the husking, clean it, get all the little hairs out, and then I will chop it into three parts. And so I've got, you know, nice small cob sections. And I boil some water. I throw the corn in for about three minutes. And then I take it out and I, I don't shock it in ice water like a lot of people do because I think it's just a waste of the ice. So I just put it into a colander and I do it in small parts and I'll just run some cold water over it to cool it down really quickly. And then I lay it on sheet pans until it's cooled and I pack them into Ziploc bags, remove all the air as much as I can, seal them up and then put them into my freezer. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm making more breadcrumbs. Now, let's talk about dehydrators first before we get into all of that. Okay, this is the type of dehydrator that I use it's an Elite Platinum by Maximatic. It is actually a very large capacity uh, dehydrator. I can open it up and show you. I'm doing breadcrumbs. I've got four trays in here already, and so I have two more sitting on top. I love this dehydrator. I used to use the round ones, and there's nothing wrong with those. I just dehydrate a lot of stuff. And when I say a lot of stuff, I mean, I have jars and jars and jars full. Um, okay, I'm going to show you. Okay, I'm not gonna show every bit of it, but you can see these two shelves full of jars. I save all of my jars that I get from grocery stores and I reuse them. And this is full of everything from tomatoes to jalapenos. I have coconut, I have violet flowers, I have dandelions, I have popcorn, I have herbs, all of that. So that's all filled up. Um, I have a pantry, I'm not gonna show that, it's a mess. But if you go over here, you can see this little, that shelf system and all the jars that are on that shelf those are all full of dehydrator stuff I have the top of this cabinet that is full of a lot of dehydrated goods as well um, 
I have a lot of recipes that I use with dehydrated stuff. Um, I dehydrate everything out of my garden as much as possible. Uh, produce from the grocery store, if I don't grow it, like mushrooms, I'll dehydrate tons of mushrooms, make mushroom powder to sprinkle on steaks or on roasts, things like that. Just a lot of different stuff. Um, I'll get into more dehydrating as my season moves forward. I did do a dehydrated kale video already because that's really good to add to soups. So if you want to check that out, go look it up and definitely see that. It's real simple. But we're going to talk about the breadcrumbs today. And I'll be honest, I don't have time here recently to make homemade bread. So I buy store-bought and what happens is my kids won't eat the ends. So I have it filled with ends of bread. I also have old stale bagels in here because I don't want to waste that. I try to not waste anything in the household and reuse as much as possible. So sometimes I get like a really nice mix of a little bit of everything. What I do when I dehydrate my bread, I turn my dehydrator on and I make sure it gets hot first because if it's warm, it tends to seal your product quicker and then you don't have as much of a uh, browning or darkening effect. It just seals it really fast. And that's just my opinion on it. But what I do is with breadcrumbs, I just load up my trays. I have my dehydrator warmed. I throw my trays in and I do it at about 160 degrees. It takes about three hours. And very simple, I just take those and throw them into a food processor and I get breadcrumbs. By looking at my dehydrator, up here I have my extra racks. But another important tool that I keep is this piece. Uh, to me, it looks like cross-stitch mesh, but it is actually used for small stuff so that you don't have a lot of things fall through your dehydrator. And I keep parchment paper. I reuse it as much as I can until, you know, it gets really bad. And I use that for herbs, for small dices of things, um, little things that are going to fall through these metal trays. You can see the mesh size on these. If it's gonna fall through that, especially when it shrinks down because everything will shrink in your dehydrator, I use the metal trays with a piece of parchment paper on top and then I don't have to worry about all the loose ends at the bottom. But I'm gonna go ahead and run the dehydrator and get all of this bread done and then zip it all up and put it into my container and I'm gonna get my corn shucked and then move forward. I did wanna talk real quick before I start to go do my corn and I apologize, I was walking outside and I have curly hair so it's getting a little frizzy. But anyway, um, I put all my breadcrumbs into this container and then I will mix them together really well. If you want, you can add seasonings to this as well. Throw in your parsley, your Italian herbs, garlic powder, things like that to have it all pre-seasoned. Okay. I went ahead and filled a jar with some breadcrumbs. Sorry, I have some crumbs on the counter. I used my canning funnel to try not to make a big mess, but I did anyway. But what I'm looking at is this is just an old pepperoncini jar. I wash my jars and keep them on a shelf. And when I need a jar, I just take them off, wipe down the lids, rinse the outsides, make sure there's no dust or residue. And I smell them to make sure that they don't stink like pickles and things like that. But if they're really good and clean, they store well. So I went ahead and filled it up. I want to leave at least like a fourth of the jar's worth of room to be able to mix in because I'm gonna put the herbs in and the seasonings. And I've got just store-bought garlic powder because I don't have any right now. And I've got some organic parsley because I'm saving mine for later. And I'm trying to use that jar up anyway. I've got oregano. I reuse my cheap little, you know, spice jars. That way I don't have to buy some. But this is oregano from my garden last year as well as with this basil. And then I still have a bag of basil somewhere, but I'm not going to get into all that. Um, i got celery seed, but no, this is bought. I didn't grow the celery seed. And then I've got my pepper and I've got some salt. You don't have to salt this, but I prefer to so that it stays shelf stable. Um, that way there's not a whole lot of issues with mold and mildew and things like that coming through. I don't use the desiccate packs or the little silica packs. I'm terrified of those things because they say do not eat. So why do I want to put it back into my food? I'm going to go ahead and put in probably a teaspoon's worth of salt. And you can always salt later when you go to use this. And then I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of pepper. If you're not a fan of black pepper, just use white. Not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and just do a couple sprinkles of celery seed. 
I like that flavor, especially when I'm doing chickens and stuff. I'm gonna put in a little bit of the basil, about a teaspoon's worth. I'm gonna do a teaspoon's worth of oregano. Probably more like, well, the oregano's a little stronger, so I did a little less. I'm gonna say that was about uh, half of a teaspoon. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of parsley to add some more color because I like my things to have color in it. All right, and then when it comes to the garlic powder, you can use diced garlic that's dried or sliced garlic, and that will flavor this without putting the garlic into it. But if you use powder, you don't need a lot because it's going to seep into the crumbs and flavor it really well. So I'm just gonna do about a teaspoon of the garlic powder as well. Now that I've gotten that all in the jar, I'm just gonna put my lid on and I'm gonna shake my jar up. Now, I mentioned a lot that I love parsley, and the reason I love parsley is because, how do I know if this is all completely mixed? Because I can see the green specks going through it. Um, I do that with meatloafs, I do that with casseroles, anything that I need to make sure I get all of my spices mixed evenly, I just throw some parsley in so I can see that. So, now I have a jar of seasoned breadcrumbs. They smell good too. You can add whatever kind of seasonings you want. In fact, think about what you use breadcrumbs for and that helps you out with your decisions on all of your spices. So like I was saying, think about what you use your breadcrumbs for. If you're doing like an Italian dish, you wanna add more of the Italian flavors. If you're doing like a Cajun catfish type um, cornmeal uh, breadcrumb type substitute, then you want to add those Cajun-y type spices. If you're using it for vegetables, you know, things like salt, pepper, garlic, paprika, those all work great just for vegetables themselves. But yeah, just think about what you use breadcrumbs for. And these breadcrumbs can also be added to meatloafs, meatballs, things of that nature. So it's not just for breading and frying, it's also for, you know, binding. And think about those flavors as well. You could do, like, in fact, I used to all the time, but I'm, oh, I'm really low on the seasoning mix that I made, but I make this steakhouse seasoning blend. And I used to season up breadcrumbs for that because I would then use that in my meatloaf and so it would give it like a really nice flavor. So again, just think about what you're doing. All right, I'm gonna go finish up with this corn because I have that to do and a couple other things and be done with it all. And that way I can get everything done. So like I was saying before though with the breadcrumbs, just make sure that they are dried completely and you'll be able to tell because when you snap them they will break just right in half I mean completely in half if they're bendy they're not even close to being done you want them to snap like a cracker you want them as dry as possible because if you add the wet moist bread into your breadcrumb mix then you're going to get a lot of mold and mildew and that's going to be an issue I'm sorry I have birds all over my porch today they're up here uh, I guess befriending Chi Chi, so I keep seeing them in the corner of my eye. It's pretty cute though, lots of birds. I mean, I've probably seen, I don't know, 30 different birds today. But anyway, um, you can take your breadcrumbs and you can put them into a Ziploc bag and mash them and roll them with a rolling pin or hit them with a meat cleaver. Or like me, I just throw mine in a food processor and zip them until they're nice and fine ground. You can throw in any type of bread. If you make homemade bread, that works just as well. Uh, I just know that, you know, like I said, I haven't had time to do homemade breads, so I've been doing store-bought, and I know it's not the greatest, but we're living in a time where I have to do what I can to keep my family fed, and store-bought bread is, you know, it's okay. It's good. It's bread. I'm not angry at it. I'll eat it anyway, but if you do want to save up your bread ends like I do, throw them in your freezer, take them out, throw them on your sheet trays, throw them in your dehydrator. Very simple. Um, I don't want to look for moldy bread and put that in there. So we'll see. Okay, so the challenges of trying to film for me have now become kids doing this, mom, 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 and animals going in under my feet, and now chickens screaming and yelling in the middle of my filming because something went wrong and it was just over an egg. So yeah, I ran outside barefoot in the rain. Yeah, I'm surprised I made it down the stairs without falling. But anyway, season up your breadcrumbs, store your breadcrumbs, do whatever you need to do, but make your own, especially if you own a dehydrator, because it's easier than buying them from the store. 
and it works really great for anything that you cook with that you need breadcrumbs for. And then you can control all of your flavors, your sodiums, and all of that when you season up your own breadcrumbs. Other than that, the corn part's pretty simple. Like I said, I just, you know, cook it for about three minutes, then take it out, cool it down, let it sit for a couple hours till it's really cold, and then I put it in bags and put it in my freezer, and then I have corn until the garden has corn. So, very simple stuff, but I just wanted to share because, again, it's a rainy day, and what do you do on a rainy day? You stay inside. So, thank you guys for stopping by. Hit the like button and comment and subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Bye. So where do I put the breadcrumbs? Let's put it right there. Breadcrumbs, yay!